Yellow people, Albania, what a country it is so far. And we wanted to showcase just how beautiful this capital city is. We've been to a couple of capital cities around the world and by far this has to be the most beautiful one. It's a blend of nature and greenery, big sprawling buildings, but also a lot of tradition and history. So uh, it's one of the very few capital cities that really does have it all. So join us in this trip today where we look around the capital city of Albania and see just how beautiful it is with our own eyes. So when I first discussed the idea of coming to Albania with my friends and people that I knew, they were like, why are you going to Albania for? What's there to do there? What's it like? And I was like, well, that's just it. I don't know. And that's the allure of a place in many ways. If you don't know what it's like, then maybe that's all the reason to visit. Now, plenty of my friends go to Turkey, to Greece, to Italy, to Spain, and that's all well and good, but this is a beautiful country that often gets ignored by people, especially British tourists. I've not seen very many British tourists here at all. I think I've met two along the way so far. And, uh, you know, for a country with such beautiful buildings, trees, landmarks, and landscapes, it baffles me as to why that is. So I went to Vienna recently, if you've seen the videos, and that was a beautiful city as well very very polished and the architecture here really could rival certain parts of Vienna and yet you don't often hear it mentioned alongside Vienna or Paris or things like that Milan Rome when people speak about beautiful cities but yet it is you know there's so much history here that it's almost hard to fathom yeah, this was ruled by so many people, the Illyrians, the Ottomans, the Italians, Nazi Germany, communism had a hold here at some point. So many influences in both the architecture, the cuisine, the culture, the people, everything. It dictates so much of this land, the landscape in terms of both the way it looks, the way the people dress, the way the people talk, has all been influenced so much by this city. And it really is essentially a melting pot of culture when you think about it. Now, interestingly enough, it's a majority Muslim country and today is Eid Mubarak. So people are celebrating currently, but it's still hustling and bustling. There's a lot going on. And oh, there's a memorial there. I'm not sure who that is. You have to help me out if you know who that person is. But um, I think the thing that I've really kind of gained from this in terms of confusion for the very least is like, why isn't this heralded in the same light that the cities that so many people on this planet claim are the best places on earth? Why is it not mentioned among them? Like for instance, we went to Athens recently and I'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys. I try to do my best when it comes to being honest. I liked the people of Athens greatly. I made some good friends there, very friendly people but I didn't particularly like the city. It didn't resonate with me. It was chaos, but not, not controlled chaos. It was just mad. There was graffiti everywhere and madness. And I did, I did learn to fall in love with it. But when I look back, I, I don't think I, I see it as fondly as I would a place like this. And yet you hear Athens, visit Athens, the most beautiful country or the most beautiful capital city. You're here, visit Vienna, visit Prague, visit, you know, Budapest. But you never hear people say, visit Tirana. And I genuinely don't know why. It's the same with Podgorica. If you've seen my videos from Podgorica, the capital of Montenegro, it's the exact same thing. Very little in terms of actual tourism, but there is so much going on there. So much beauty, so much history, so many different buildings, landscape sprawling mountains things like that and yet again it's not mentioned and it's not seen as a place where people can go to visit and yet we got to Podgorica for around 70 pounds return flight each where will you see a mixture of Ottoman buildings high-rise buildings communist buildings and green lush park in the same place as well as 
technology and history intertwined? I'm willing to bet not many. And that's the thing with Albania. It is very much a hidden gem of Europe. And now, a lot of the YouTube videos will showcase that indeed. But it doesn't really look into the, the heart of Albania, I don't think. It doesn't really focus on how much the different cultures, or how much the different rule of this land has influenced the infrastructure. Again, an Ottoman-style building there. And it, as well, Albania does have a very cool flag. So this is the famous square. I'll put the name of it down below. And you've got a beautiful opera house there. I don't know if you can make that into the distance, but up there, there's some sprawling mountains. A high rise building that's currently being renovated and built up further, perhaps to bring more businesses into the city. But for a city with such vibrance and character, it really does confuse me as to why people are not flocking here. Like, I'm in mean, the square currently, I can see tourists, but when you go to, say, Athens, I could barely even move to get past all the tourists. Now, if you're from Albania, you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's a good thing. I don't want my city to be ruined by tourists. And I would agree with that because tourism can become a blight. If you've seen our video from Kotor or Kotur, I never get the pronunciation right there. We get that place in uh, Montenegro. It was such a beautiful old town. It had everything, history, architecture, crystal clear waters, but tourism had taken over. And as a result, it lost its character and charm and it became tedious to be there. And obviously I'm a tourist. I do contribute to the problem, but I do try to visit the country and be as respectful to people as I can. I try to speak the language. I try to break off the tourist cycle and I try to stay with the locals in the local parts of the city. So we're currently staying in uh, a less touristy part of the city, which has a completely different vibe to this. But today I'm more focused on this side, the beauty, the history, and the culture as a whole. So one thing that's really surprised me actually about Tirana in general is just how, uh, how many high rise buildings there are and how modern it is in certain places as well. Like it's, well, you can see up there really, it's, uh, it's such a modern country. Ooh, I've got to be careful, right? <laughs> it's such a modern country and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just crazy how well developed it is. Like the bus systems here are very regular. Buses are clean. If you look over there, you can see an example of a bus. And uh, we had a problem in Podgorica in Montenegro where the infrastructure was quite poor. It was quite hard to traverse around the city because there wasn't much in terms of infrastructure. Nothing really like that existed. Um, there were buses, but they were irregular. Whereas here in Tirana, the buses are fairly on time and clean, well maintained. What more can you ask for? Infrastructurally, there are improvements that do need to be made, of course. If you look at the pavements, they fall into bits and areas. The same in the UK. We pay an exorbitant amount of uh, council tax to our local councils to fix the problems and they never really seem to do. But uh, we'll try to build more houses. That's a problem that we have in the UK. But look up here, you can see beautiful murals everywhere you look. And you've got old, beauty, modern and historic all together. Again, I ask, how many cities will you get that same experience? All right, so I was walking around, found an ice cream store, we need it because it's quite hot. And look what we got here. That's pretty nice, isn't it? That, they have it all over Europe, but they don't have them in England. They're called, they're Hungarian, they're called Kodoksklatsch. There might be an Albanian version, but the, I recognize these as Kodoksklatsch. And it's basically like, well, this is uh, usually made with cinnamon, but this has got sugar on it. And we've got a Snickers ice cream. So go on, Sam, give it a go, give it your review. Be as honest as you can and all that jazz. I'm taking it, she won't let me have any. I'm gonna nick a bit of a spoon off her. Let's give it a go, Snickers ice cream. 
Mmm. That's good. Albanian ice cream people. Give that a go. Okay, so we're heading to the uh, what's known as the Tirana Pyramid, which uh, I didn't know much about actually. Uh, I was looking at local sites and I saw the Tirana Pyramid and I was like, Tirana Pyramid? What on earth is the Tirana Pyramid? And I looked it up on the map and wow, what a building. <laughs> I was very impressed. I thought I must share this with everybody and show them. And uh, it really is an example of unique architecture actually. I've never seen anything like it before. So I'm not far from it now, but uh, look at this old style wall here. I mean, that is absolutely stunning. You've got beautiful trees over here. You've got, I don't know if you can make it out, sprawling mountains in the distance there. These lovely floors, which you see quite a lot of in Croatia and stuff as well. Um, I'm not sure what this particular style is called. And then you've got these cobbled streets. And look at this wall. I wonder how ancient that wall is. And down there, there's some old buildings. I don't know if I'm permitted to go down there. So, yeah, there. oh really? We might have to go and check that out. So, just making sure we're going in the right direction. My uh, my Google Maps isn't uh, very reliable today. It's uh, basically just having a day off. But I get a, I get a bit of life kicking into it every now and then. So I'm quite lucky actually because I got a uh, what do you call it? A SIM card in Montenegro, and that SIM card works here. I have to turn on data roaming, but so far, it's not really taking much data from me. No, my luck, I'll probably be slapped with a huge charge when I get back to England. <laughs> hey, you owe us a thousand euros. <laughs> really hoping that's not the case. And we do seem to be going the wrong way, but we'll push on in this direction because it's quite nice, and I'm sure we'll find what we're looking for. But this, this area here is just too nice just to forget about. <laughs> Hope you're right there, mate. <laughs> Someone just smashed the glass. But, um, now back in England, everyone would have gone. Ugh. In England, everyone would have gone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. So, what I really like about Albania, people, what I love about Albania is the coffee culture. So, there's very much a coffee culture in Albania where people gather together in a nice little area like this and they share a coffee and a story together. And I think that's something that we're lacking in the UK where I'm from. Coffee, you know, it's not really a, it's not really a, a process of gathering. I guess it kind of is, but uh, it's not, um, it's not a process where people gather together to, to share their time and be together. People tend to go down the pub. But actually here, coffee seems to be a bit more popular. Coffee houses and the pace of life is quite a bit slower, a bit more relaxed. And those are the people. They're a lot more relaxed and a lot more friendlier. And things just take time here and things are, you know, patient and be prepared to wait in a queue or two, you know. However, being from England, that is something we are very good at. One thing we're not good at is queue pushers. Oh. The old queue pushers. You get them a lot here in Albania. Yeah. God, it drives me crazy. I don't know why they can't just form an orderly queue and just use it. It's not fair. But we were waiting there first. That ice cream. I felt like I was waiting there forever. Half the people were just jumping the queue. And I was like, I've got to take a stand here. I've got to push forward. I've got to be more aggressive. <clears throat> Look at this. Wow. As I say, the actual, uh, the area around you changes so often. I don't know where we are. <laughs> and I think we're back to where it started. So we're going to go and find that pyramid, go and have a closer look at it and share it with you people shortly. Here we go. There's the Toronto Pyramid. What a building. How amazing is that? I bet you weren't expecting that, were you? It's really hard to define the actual architectural style of this. It's almost like brutality combined with modernism. It's uh, it's quite quite a spectacle, really. And then across the road, you've got these sprawling landscapes, interesting coloured buildings, lovely trees, and everything. Right, should we scale it? What a city. We're gonna go and give it a climb. Let's have a look at the views from up there. So we've made it up and uh, we're scared of heights, so you're gonna have to bear with us. And uh, there's railing on the floor. So my uh, my lens for my camera is a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit volatile. It could just fall off. And the last thing I wanna do is lose my camera lens down there because I will never see it again. 
Wow. Just in the uh, distance there, you can see the church. It's got a blue dome. I'll try and zoom in on it for you, if you're interested. It's just over there, along with the rest of the sites of the city. Look at that. But currently, as you can see, we've got Instagrammer's Paradise over there. There's always an Instagrammer's Paradise, but thankfully, they've not figured out that this is just a good a place. So, let's have a little look over here. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, it's a nice view. Um, <laughs> but it's a bit too high. It is a little bit high. I mean, obviously, them I stairs. We walked on these grades not so long ago because I was over in that direction. And I was like, yeah, I'll go over to Bob. And I started walking and I, was, and I froze. I was like, no. It froze up completely. I was like, no. I saw I backtracked on myself. But I've just noticed actually that there's a really nice looking district down here. Mm. Very interesting. So quite green and uh, looks quite quite old as well. There. And uh, yeah, might go and give that a look in a bit. But let's continue the tour of this area so you can see what the uh, the skyline looks like in more detail. There is actually also a skylight as well. But uh, well, as I said, I'm scared of heights. So. I'll give you a brief view, but I won't get too close. <laughs> I'm just paranoid about my lens falling off. It's happened a few times already. But yeah, we've got these sprawling mountains off into the distance, these trees. So yeah, people, if you're over this direction, come and have a look at the Tirana Pyramid. Give it a climb. It's quite a hefty climb, but it's good. Well, it's well worth it. And let us know what you think if you've done it already. Pretty cool thing I've just spotted here. We've got a, uh, a bridge that offers free Wi-Fi. It's called the Vodafone Bridge. I wonder why it's called the Vodafone Bridge. Now look at these buildings. And uh, the Vodafone Bridge itself also has some pretty nice views itself, actually. Where it's got a lovely flowing stream just underneath it, just here. How nice is that? Scrolling off at the distance with the mountains, the big old buildings. Beauty. Hi. So, as we were at the um, pyramid, we saw this absolutely stunning building, mm. didn't we? Oh, yes. In the distance, while we were right at the top. And we thought, you know, let's go down and have a wander around and oh my let me turn this around and I'll show you. Words don't even do it justice does it? No absolutely not are you ready? Have a look at this. How nice is that? We believe that might even be the Royal Palace. Yeah. So entrance is barred off which is of course understandable. This is someone's home after all you've got to respect that but uh yeah, this has got to be amongst one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. I think that architecture is beyond all words. And the surrounding area as well oh, is also very, very nice. Oh, I can't get over there. That's absolutely gorgeous. You don't see something like that every day, do you, people? All right, people, so wandering around and uh, just happened to stumble across this uh, rather decent looking shopping centre. And uh, I say stumble across it, you can't really miss it. <laughs> it's right in front of us. So we're gonna go and have a little look in there. And whilst having a little look around, we'll give you our thoughts and feelings about Tirana. Now, of course, you're probably gonna sit there thinking, well, all he's gonna do is be positive. Of course, you are partially correct there, but there are a negative, there is a negative or two. And I think it's important to say it. So, first and foremost, it's actually incredibly modern, beautiful, infrastructure's really good, bus systems work really well, you know, the people are friendly and everyone can't do enough to help you out. And if you look at this shopping centre, this is a great example of just how modern and beautiful Albania is. There's such a variety here. The question is, what are the problems? Well, the first problem, has got to be the International Bus Station. Now, with a name like International Bus Station and buildings like this, you're going to assume that bus station is going to be pretty incredible, but it is not. 
We've been to bus stations around the world and it is, sorry Albania, the worst, by far, the worst. We got there and there were quite literally rats all around it and it was completely just broken down and it was terrible. And that was our first impression of the city, Albania. How sad would have that been? If we got in and that would have been the first impression we had had of Albania. Look at the size of this shopping mall. It goes all the way up there. Madness. Such a modern, beautiful country. But the bus station is terrible. We've been to bus stations in Oman, Abu Dhabi, Mostar in Bosnia, Kotor in uh, Montenegro, of course Podgorica in Montenegro, that's how we got here. And comparatively, them bus stations are 10 times better than this bus, uh, the bus station in Tirana. Yet somehow, Tirana is a much better city than many of the cities we've been to. So the bus station really does let you guys down, I'm afraid. But when you've got places like this, and a clear effort to improve the infrastructure with big buildings, great transport links, and things like that. It's, uh, it, it comes as a bit of a surprise to me that more effort hasn't been put into the bus station because you've got to think people arrive, and if they're on the bus, which many people do come here by bus, the first thing they're going to see is a rat-infested bus station. And that is not the impression Tirana deserves. I am very, very passionate about your city now, Tirana. If I could move anywhere in the world right now, it'd be here. It is incredibly beautiful but the bus station needs work. And actually, funnily enough, it's the exact same as my hometown in Peterborough, where I'm from, but where we're from. <laughs> well, actually, technically, Tammy's from King's Lynn, so that's not true. But our bus station is actually rather dangerous. Uh, our bus station's become somewhat of a, uh, an area for ganglands and gang disputes, which is weird, actually, because a lot of the gangs are just 14-year-old children arguing with each other. But nonetheless, still uh, quite uncomfortable for people to go through. So it could be worse for you, Tirana. Your bus station is broken down and things like that. But uh, it doesn't it doesn't flood like ours does. Ours floods, but it does need work. But all in all, I have to say, for me, this has been one of the biggest surprises I've ever experienced. I came to Albania to Tirana with no real expectations, no real thought as to what it was going to be like, and in a way, I'm glad I haven't because if I'd done any research before, I may have not been as blown away by things like this and places like this and things all around me that I wasn't ready to see. Because comparatively, many of the Balkan countries still need a lot of work in terms of getting up to speed with being modern and a cleaner infrastructure. And yet here in Albania, it's not a problem at all. This has one of the best infrastructures I've seen in this part of the world. And I dare argue that this is a lot more modern and a lot more cleaner and safer than a lot of the capital cities that I've been to across the world. And as I say, you're doing yourself a disservice with your bus station, guys. So if you can fix that one, I think you're onto something. I think tourism will start popping. I've not seen your airport though. That might be a really good airport and I'd imagine it's gonna be if it's anything like the buildings that we've been seeing recently. But, yeah. So, as a whole, I would recommend you come and visit Albania if you get the chance. If you're in Podgorica, in Montenegro, even if it's just a day trip, but I think it deserves more than a day trip. And in fact, I'm a bit disappointed we're not here for longer because genuinely, it is my new favorite city. As I say, there are areas for improvement, but hey, what city doesn't have an area for improvement? And it's the feedback from the people that really help improve things. And that's how things can grow. So I just want to start off by saying thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video. It's been a rather long one, but I really wanted to showcase every part of Tirana. And I really hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope the Tirana series has been informative and interesting. And we're going to go and explore this place at night time and see how safe it is. And I've got a feeling it's going to be completely safe. But we're still going to explore it because there's so many lights and so many beautiful sights at night time that it just can't be missed. So join us in that video next week and we'll share with you what Albania is like at night time.